All righty. All right. Well, good evening. My name is Grant Rice. Uh, today, I'll also be talking about Chapter 11, our nonverbal communication chapter. Uh, but more specifically, uh, I have been blessed with a part of talking about nonverbal signs of deception. So, jumping right into it, <clears throat> essentially, what are nonverbal signs and how do they relate to the business world? So, by what I have written down, um, I just talked about how in the business world, managers use these nonverbal signs of communication between, you know, their employees, other managers, um, and they use these nonverbal signs as well as verbal uh, to manage the veracity of verbal statements. So with these, you know, these nonverbal actions or signs, there's good, there's bad. But specifically during acts of deception, you know, the negative types of signs that we don't always see, um, nonverbal signs tend to leak out of the deceiver despite attempts of control. Uh, we'll talk about this later, but some forms of leakage, you know, can be movement, voice change, tone, you know, how do they pitch their sentences at us. So um, specifically today, I will be talking about signs of deception that will be discussed. Uh, such as, like I was saying, other forms of nonverbal deception can be personal space, artifacts, and voice, and those are the specific three that we'll be getting into today. So, beginning with personal space, what is it? Um, you know, it's a pretty common theme, but def definition-wise, personal space is the space allotted from one's distance from another or how they distance themselves compared to objects. Essentially, it is their comfortable communication space. So in the workplace, how can we see these? How can they uh, be deceitful? You know, personal space, I think, is actually one of the easier ones to see. Uh, for example, if I go up, shake a stranger's hand, hi, nice to meet you, my name is Grant, you'll notice right after that handshake, they'll tend to back off, get to more of that personal area, not so much intimate, right up in your face, right? Um, you know, and that's not deceitful, but deceitful actions can be, you know, if you're having an interview, if there needs to be like an employee review, such things like that, where not the most positive information has to be given off. Deceitful action in the personal space can be, I hear something negative, I close myself off like this, lean back, kind of lean away, uninterested, right? Uh, that's pretty, pretty commonly seen. Uh, contrary to that, you know, if I was super comfortable, I'd be opening up, leaning in, trying to be more engaged. Just, you know, personal space, the more intimate they are, the closer they get. Uh, and the more deceitful actions typically are lean back, closed off, and reserved. Second topic that we'll be talking about are artifacts. Artifacts are essentially just personal possessions that one uses, you know, either in their office, at home, in their car. Basically, it describes who they are, who they want to portray themselves as. Uh, I believe one of the examples, you know, I like to use is the car salesman pitch. You know, they're in the suit, they're in the tie, they're looking very good, they're using correct pronunciation they're excited enthusiastic right you go in there you like the car you walk into the what do you call it call salesman's office right you see a bunch of plaques a bunch of awards a bunch of pictures of his family trying to say he's a family man very trustworthy right he uses these artifacts to portray an image of what he wants you to perceive and this is very relative you know person to person everyone has their own intentions and interpretations so it could come off as boastful, cocky, you know, but that's just who wants to interpret it. And that's why we have to be careful because these interpretations are relative. So artifacts, what are they? They're objects we use just explaining who we want to be and what our intended outcome is to be. Voice. This one is very interesting. It's probably our best tool for detecting dece deception. Uh, these can include, you know, pitch, tone, volume, how I deliver the sentences, right? What we do know already is that the longer someone takes, the more they drag it out. That's typically an act of deception, right? You're getting interrogated. You don't want to tell them. You don't want to spill the beans. I'm going to drag it out. I'm going to try and sound sophisticated, get a whole bunch of points to ramble them up and try and confuse them to get myself to look relevant, I'll say, smart. Uh, what we also do know with voice is that higher pitch has been shown to also be correlated with deception as well. You know, think of it. It's Saturday morning. You're hanging out at your mom's place as a kid. Your mom wakes up, sees you on the TV. 
Josh, why haven't you done the dishes? Can you do the dishes? You respond back, I don't know. Can I do the dishes? You know, it's that little sarcastic remark where the pitch changes, goes higher. You can see the deceitful actions with it. Uh, definitely one of the easiest to see. It's not a physical movement, but I believe that people are pretty easy on picking up on pitch, their tone, the volume they want to express stuff with. Uh, by far the easiest tool for detecting deception, though. So in closing, uh, just a few main points just to recap and understand. Everything but the words, the physical words, that can be considered nonverbal communication, right? So it's a lot of things all messed up into one. It's a big, complicated, complex ball of dialogue. Um, essentially, nonverbal cues, they just add redundancy to the verbal message, right? They give us the meaning. They give that impact, that little salt on whatever you're cooking, right? The little flare at the end. Specifically, how can we catch deceitful actions? We want to use assessment tools of leakage, you know, that we talked about with movement, voice, do they use artifacts? How are they really in their personal space when they're talking to each other? Stuff like that. And finally, probably the most important takeaway is that there's no one size fits all approach for these nonverbal communications. Much like artifacts, nonverbal communication in general is very interpretive. It's relative person to person. So there is no one size fits all. There is no strategy. Best case scenario, just be there when the nonverbal communication is happening and you should be able to diagnose it from there. Other than that, thank you and have a great one.